All right, let me have your attention. In our Western civilization, we have had a propensity for and a preoccupation with study and the pursuit of knowledge. We, we have equated knowledge, the gaining of knowledge, with power. We recognize that those that know rule. Throughout the world, the Western world, knowledge, the gain pursuit of knowledge, has resulted in the ruling class. Those that are knowledgeable rule. We know that. We know that instinctively. We know that by precept and example. In the church today, we have been conditioned to the same value system. The church today is worldly. The church today is westernized. We're so secularized, we've almost completely eliminated the supernatural from our perceptions. We've come to a place where we don't anticipate God to operate as God among us. We've come to a place where we really think that the pursuit of study is, has become an end in itself, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing to study this book. It's a good thing. It's an important thing. It's a foundational thing. But to study it without acting upon it is incomplete. Both Jesus and James told us that hearing without doing is incomplete. Jesus came as the Word of God. He came from God, became incarnate, and spoke the words of God for all humanity and all, all time to know the heart and the will of the Father. The words then illuminate the heart and the will of the Father. If you study Jesus' words, you can understand and, be, and have the illumination of the heart of God. But the works illustrate. We not only need the illumination, we need the illustration. We need the word and the works. To say I love you and do nothing about it is an incomplete statement. To say I'll pray for you and not pray is incomplete. To say that Jesus heals and not pray for the sick is incomplete. To say that Jesus saves and not witness to the lost is incomplete. To say that God is God and Lord of all things and not operate as though he is God and as though he is Lord is incomplete. We have been inconsistent in many of our patterns and practices in the church. What we're about to do is invite the Holy Spirit to come. We're going to ask him to minister to us. We're going to ask him to give us direction. We're going to learn to move this week with the, the Spirit of God. What the Spirit does, we're going to do. But he's the leader.